3D printers nowadays are getting very easy to use, where straight out of the box, you don't need to do tuning, you don't need to do upgrades, you get quick quality prints very easily. But some people love that process of upgrading a printer. This is a perfect project printer in 2024. This is the Kingroon KPL-1. It's a Core XY 3D printer running on linear rails, running Clipper. Those three specs really open up a lot of possibilities with this 3D printer. It comes with a full enclosure around it, but it's not a perfect printer. There's a lot of issues I've had with this printer that make it not one I would recommend for everybody. But if you want to dive into a printer and really tinker with it and upgrade it, maybe this one's for you. Let's dive into the specs. It's got a build volume of 210 by 210 by 210. Like I said, it is Core XY, so it's got a lot of belts in here. It's running linear rails on the X and Y. There are linear rods on the Z motion. And those three things coming in at the mid $300, that's really the best thing about this printer. It's cheap because there are some things you're gonna wanna upgrade on here. This enclosure we can start with is not my favorite part of it. Most of my printing I printed without the enclosure on there because it doesn't fit very well on here. There's a lot of panel gaps here, which you will lose a lot of heat there. So if you want this for a primarily ABS printing, you're gonna to wanna to get some foam and sort of seal up these gaps in all the panel gaps around here. Another downside to this enclosure is that it's very dark acrylic here. So you can't really see what's happening in there. Most printers nowadays would come with a light and a webcam in there. This one doesn't come with either of those. There are USB plugs here on the left, so you could attach your own webcam to it. But if you put a webcam in there, you'd also need to put a light in there. There are great ways to add lights to things. You could either wire it directly to the main board or use that extra USB port there to power some more lights in here. It's very doable. You could make this a custom printer and make it exactly how you want it to work. But out of the box, it's definitely lacking a few of these nice features that have become more standard on other printers. One downside of it being Core XY is you do need the belts tightened correctly and they didn't come tightened correctly for me. So I did have to go in there and tighten one of them to try to get them to close to the right tightness. And it's kind of difficult to get around to the back of the hot end, which is where you need to go with the Allen key to tighten the belts. The next major difficulty of this printer is loading filament on the back. This, a lot of people can see the issue here. The spool needs to be loaded here on this really small spool holder, and then it needs to come and then it needs to come straight over here into the filament runout detector. That is a really tight bend in itself. This is way too close to the spool holder and this is too high. So when you open the top hat, it's gonna be resting on the spool, adding extra friction to things. Then it has to go through this really tight bend in this reverse PTFE Bowden tube. That adds a lot of friction on there. And you can tell when you're feeding filament in there, there's a lot of force required to get it through this really tight bend, up and around the bend on the inside, and to the actual hot end. And I have already started to see some mods out there of putting a replacement spool holder on there, which will mount it lower, bypass the filament runout detector, and give this a much smoother bend up and around and to the hot end. I've also seen other mods out there to add some brackets up here so the top hat will rest on that instead of resting on the spool, which will add extra friction, like I said, and cause some under extrusion. And another downside with this top hat is that it does press on this Bowden tube and CAN bus wire that's running to the hot end. So you really should modify this. And if you printed a top hat on here, something to raise this panel up just an inch or two, it would be way better and not have so much extra bending here on that filament. It's gonna have a really hard path for it to get to it. Also could wear out these wires constantly rubbing against this top panel here. Some other odd mechanical design choices here. The hot end is enclosed in a metal enclosure, which is gonna add a lot of extra weight. Extra weight on your hot end adds ringing to the print. So that's an odd choice. That's why most other printers go with a plastic enclosure around your hot end. Inside the hot end here, it is a ceramic heater on the hot end, so it heats up really quickly, which is great. It does use an inductive probe on here, and there are no load cells in the bed. That means you will still need to use a piece of paper to manually set the Z offset on this printer, which is kind of disappointing in 2024. A lot of new printers are using a load cell to be able to manually adjust that Z offset, or even using multiple load cells, and that way it uses the nozzle to probe the entire bed instead of using a separate probe 
to do that. Another odd design choice here is the touchscreen on the front. It's a 3.5 inch resistive touchscreen and the resistive touchscreen really isn't great. So the odd thing that this printer comes with is a stylus. Those buttons are so small, I can't use my finger on them. You have to use the stylus to be able to maneuver and get around the menus. Also, it is resistive, which is annoying that you really have to like press on it really hard. It's not as nice and premium feeling as a capacitive touchscreen on other printers. And the resistive touchscreen will wear out much quicker. And it's inside the enclosure. So when you're printing, say you're printing a high temperature ABS filament, it's enclosed and you can't see that screen to see what's happening inside there. You would need to open it up, which is gonna let all that hot air out, which you really don't wanna do when printing ABS. So you will need to use the clipper web interface to see what's happening inside there. Another mechanical design on this printer that will need to be upgraded to have a good time with it are the fans. There's a reason why I haven't had this printer on while I'm doing this talking. So here's the fan noise when you just turn the printer on. There's a power supply fan on there and then there's an extra fan that's cooling off the control board down underneath. And it's set to turn on at around 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, for my testing, I changed that inside of Clipper, which you can do in the config file to adjust that up to about 40 degrees Celsius. That way when it's just sitting idle, it's not gonna kick on this extra really loud fan down there, which would be really easy to swap out with a higher quality Noctua or really just any better fan is gonna be a lot quieter than this one. So now talking about the software side of things. It is a very close to stock Clipper installation. It, it comes with Fluid and Mansail as your web interfaces. If you go to that stock IP address, it will open Fluid. And at the end of that, if you add a colon 86, that will take you to Mainsail. They're both great. It's just purely a preference thing of which one you like more. I like Fluid. A lot of other people like Mainsail. One pretty big downside to it not being pure Clipper is that you can't update it without them sending you the updates. So normally I have Clipper installed on my Voron and I would say once a week there's a new update to either Fluid, Clipper, Moonraker, all the different components that are working together. Those are constantly being updated. There's new updates and new features always being put out. With this one, you need to wait till King Rune creates a new image and then sends it to you. And then even then it gets more difficult. You have to go to the main board down there remove the EMMC chip, and they send you this little EMMC to micro SD adapter. You take this, put it on your computer, and flash that new image that they've sent onto that chip, and then you put the chip back in your printer, and now you have the new firmware loaded on there. So that's a really elaborate process that I would not wanna do very often. When Clipper and Fluid and Mainsail are constantly being updated in real life, so in the last two weeks of me having this printer, I haven't updated anything on it because they haven't released any new images. Whereas in the last two weeks on my Voron, I have updated it a lot. You get a little notification, click on it, say update all packages that needs, and it just automatically handles all that. Another reason why this would only be a good printer for a real tinkerer is that it only comes with a slicer profiles for PLA filament. It does come with a profile for Cura, Prusa Slicer, and Orca Slicer. So that sort of covers your bases, but with each of those, it only comes with a preset profile for PLA. It's really common nowadays for most printers to come with really good profiles that surely you can optimize them, but they will print all the filaments that should work on that printer. This one only comes with PLA, and I think it could be optimized a good amount. So if you want to print TPU, ABS, PETG, you're going to need to work on those. Now let's move on to some positives. The print quality and speed of this printer is really good. It printed really quality benches here very quickly. A little bit of under extrusion on a few bits are my only complaint, and I think that has to do with the bending of the Bowden tube here. This one, this stringing vase worked great. Here, it sort of messed up on the narrow bits here, and I'm not sure why it printed beautifully on the bottom half and then messed up here in the middle. A vase mode print just to test some speed and it prints great. I also printed a tolerance coin and it worked all the way down to 1.5 millimeter. The 1.0 and 0.5 didn't work. I would call this a solid pass on a tolerance test with zero tuning. And in the end, it really is the print quality and speed of this printer that made it not a total pass. It, that is a solid redeeming quality there and all the fixes are minor mechanical ones. A big one would be fixed if you just didn't put the enclosure on it, which in most of my testing, I didn't have the enclosure on there anyways. 
and I liked it a lot more. Maybe they could sell a cheaper version without those panels, similar to what Flashforge did with their Adventurer 5M. The 5M Pro is more just enclosed. The 5M is more open air, very similar to this one. And if you're just printing PLA, which I print 95% PLA, you're gonna wanna keep the door open and the top off. So in that case, you could just not attach them and have a way better time. So who would I recommend this for? This is a great second printer for someone who wants a hobby printer to learn Clipper. There's a lot of the macros that I would recommend you update and change. And so you can learn how to adjust Clipper macros. You can learn how to replace fans on here, learn how to seal up enclosures, how to print new parts to create a better spool system on the back. It could be turned into a great printer with a lot of tinkering and tuning at work and a lot of extra parts you're gonna have to buy. So definitely not something I would recommend for everyone or anyone who wants an easy to use printer. There are much easier and cheaper printers to use. But this one could be a fun project for someone if you could pick it up for a really great price. And if you are thinking about picking up this printer or anything else, I will have some affiliate links in the description down below, and I will try to keep it updated with current coupons for this printer. If you do have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below, or just comments of what you think about a printer like this. Are you the type of person who just wants to tinker with their 3D printer, or wants a solid printer that they can just use and upgrade when they need to, versus this one needs some day one upgrades to really make it a great machine? That about wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.